Hey, good morning, church. Man, we're so glad that you've joined us in the lobby today. Uh, we're calling this first 15 minutes before our service starts the lobby. Just kind of like if we were in the building, you would be walking in and saying hello to various people, uh, finding your seat and all those things. So on my screen here today is kind of what you may be seeing on your TV or your computer at home today. The announcements are scrolling. We encourage you to take time to go down in the chat window here and say hello to everyone and make sure you spell it correctly. Uh, just kidding, but we uh, we just want you to make sure you can say hi. If you haven't done this before, you might have to give yourself a nickname. We just encourage you to use your first initial and your last name. Let us know that you've been with us today. Now, another important part is right up here at the very top. We've got some real quick links. If you couldn't, if, if you come uh, click on that connection card, it'll take you to this screen. And don't worry because the service is still playing on this other tab. It opens a brand new tab. The service is here and the connection card is right here. We encourage you to fill this out. It won't take you real long, uh, but we just encourage you to fill that out. It gives you an opportunity to let us know who's with you today, an opportunity to share some prayer requests and things like that. So as you're waiting in the lobby, getting your, your coffee or your tea ready for church today, we encourage you to fill out the connect uh, connection card and uh, we'll be with you in just a few minutes. But thanks for again for joining us. Welcome to the lobby. Get comfortable. Church is going to start real soon. Hey, good morning again, church. We're so glad you're in the lobby today. Service is just about to get started. I wanted to show you one cool feature about our streaming service. Uh, there is a live prayer button right here at the very bottom of the screen, and that will be with you throughout the day. If you click on that live prayer button, you have the opportunity to, to share a nickname right here if you haven't done that already. Again, first initial, last name, and then click pray. What that'll do Right here in your chat window, it'll say someone will be with you shortly. Now, the cool thing is, is that our staff that's being a host with this service today has an opportunity to see that and then join you in prayer. If there was another staff member uh, on this video right now, they would be responding to you right in the screen and we could just have a quick conversation and through text essentially be able to share a prayer uh, request with you and pray for you. So take a moment if there's something that we can be praying for your family about, click that live prayer button and then be waiting for when one of us is able to respond to that request and we'll be with you in just a few minutes. Again, we're so glad you're in the lobby today. God bless you. Service is getting ready to start real, real soon.
Hey again, church. We're so glad you're here. A couple things I wanted to mention just before we get started today. Up across the very top of your screen, you got some cool links. One is to give. If you click on that, it's going to take you right to our website. That's a pretty good feature. If you click events, it takes you right to the hub where we got some great information going on there. And one uh, final one, our Facebook page is there or even back to our church website. So lots of good information there that you can click on and be a part of what's uh, taking place. If you notice in the very bottom here, it says notes. Hey, when you click on that, you're going to see some of the scriptures and some of the things you can follow along with our sermon today as well. So, hey, we're glad you're with us. We're encouraging you just to plug in, get connected, say hello, and service is getting ready to start. God bless you. Hey, good morning again, church. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a behind the scenes look at what's taking place during church. Now I've logged in uh, to our admin screen here, our hosting screen, and this is what our staff gets to see during worship. We get to communicate with each other, just the staff in this host chat space. This is a public chat where you guys are all saying hello today and we're getting a way to, to communicate with you. There's also this cool little feature over here called Moments where we get to post various things into that chat like this one. It's going to say, see what's going on at the hub. And if you clicked on continue right here, that would take you directly to the hub on our website. All different kinds of features that we get to use today. This is just such a blessing to use, an awesome tool for our staff to be able to use today. And I just wanted to give you a real quick behind the scenes look at it. We're getting ready to start service today. God bless you for being here today. Let's trust that God's going to do a good work in our hearts. God bless you. We'll be with you in just a minute.
Oh, hey there. I'm glad you're with us today. We're continuing our series on Suit Up, where we've been looking at the armor of God. Today we're going to be considering what's on your feet. You know, when I think about the armor of God, I think about a lot of really cool things, but footwear isn't necessarily one of them. But the more I think about it, what's on your feet really does matter. I mean, think about when I'm out here running right now. I wouldn't want to be running in sandals or in my bare feet. So what's on your feet, it matters. You know who taught me to put on my shoes and tie my laces? My mom. I bet your mom had an important role in you learning to do the same thing. Today's Mother's Day, and we want to celebrate all the moms in our lives. So I don't know if your mom is close by, or maybe she's a phone call away, or maybe your mom has passed on. But I hope that today you're able to find a way to celebrate all the moms in your life. So I want to say happy Mother's Day. Now let's get ready to worship. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. Our Father, who art in heaven, the rocks cry out your fame. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. every morning mercy as daily bread in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we pray and lead us not to temptation but deliver us with your hand in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we pray Father we song I will sing sing a new song I will sing sing a new song to the Lord let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven for the King Say good morning to my friend Mike. Hello, I'm Pastor Mike DeVeest, and I want to welcome you to worship with us today. We are honored and grateful that you have taken time out of your schedule to join together with us as we worship the Lord and prepare to receive what He has for us today. 
Pastor Terry has a great sermon lined up today as we continue our suit up sermon series as he talks about the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. We also want to invite you to fill out our online connection card if you haven't done that yet. We would love to know that you've joined us in any way that we can be praying for you and your family. As we get ready to continue in our worship, let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to gather in your name from places all around our community. We just ask that you would meet us here this morning, that you would reveal your word and your truth to us, and that you would be glorified by our presence together as your body. May your blessing pour out on us today wherever we are and continue to speak truth and life into us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I welcome Donna O'Brien as she shares a scripture reading with us. Good morning. Today's reading is coming from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. A man named Epaphras had approached Paul while he was in prison, asking for his assistance as false teachers had risen up in the church. Paul penned this letter to the church at Colossians. Please follow along as I read verses 3 through 5 of 1 Colossians, chapter 1. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about what you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace. The word of the Lord.
sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no hoping that you are doing well and at this time we'd like to ask you if you would pray with us so we pray our father in heaven we come to you and we thank you for listening to us we we know that you are the great lord the great 
Elohim, thank you for being our Lord and letting us come and lay ourselves before you and, mm -hmm. and praise you and, and be able to know that you listen. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to open ourselves up to you, to follow you, for the guidance you can give us, for the ability you've given us to see through your eyes, mm -hmm. if only we ask. Thank you for that. Lord, we do ask you for eyes to see and ears to hear. <clears throat> Help us during this time, Father, to endure with strength that we find only in you. We ask you, Father, for blessings on those who especially serve in all of the service industries. We ask you, Father, to bless those who are working in healthcare services, Father, all walks of life. We ask you, Father, to hear us as we parent children, give us wisdom and strength. Help us all, Father, to bond together as one family in Christ. We thank you for who you are. And before we close, we would like to close with a prayer that gives us great strength each day. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom, wisdom to, to know, know the, the difference. difference. In Christ our Lord, we ask all these things and praise your name. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Troy. Hey, Pastor Kelly, you guys have started a new series called Blast Off. What are we learning about this week? So we're continuing our Blast Off series and launching our faith in Christ. So last week, the big idea was that we can spend time with God. This week, we will learn that people can help our faith grow. Mm. Yeah. So today's story is going to be from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. So if you have your Bibles, kids, go ahead and find them. Find that reference because um, we're going to come back to that. But before we get to that, Troy, yep. you guys are into your Habits of Happiness series, right? We are. We are. So what are you talking about tonight? You know, we're using the Sermon on the Mount to talk about kind of this Habits of Happiness. And tonight, we're talking about the importance of priority. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little story about my life and how I had my priorities kind of mixed up. And then we're going to dive into what Jesus has to say about that. And so join us tonight, 530 on Zoom. We'd love to have you, uh, any student, 12, or 7th through 12th grade. Nice. Uh, and so, but right now, I'm going to get ready to blast off, but you have a special helper that's going to help you I tell the do. story. So, Bria, why don't you come on up? Come on up. All right. So, Bria's going to help me with this story. Bria, do you know the story of the paralyzed man that Jesus healed? Yeah. Can you tell that story? What do you remember from it? Tell it really loud. Um, that there was a guy who was paralyzed, and these people, like, put him kind of like on a bed that you can move, and they brought him to God, and they put him on the roof, and they cut a hole in the roof, and then they tied, um, they tied a rope around his bed, I think, and they, um, they, they dropped, do? they put, they slowly, um, put him down so that he was on the floor with Jesus, and um, Jesus touched him and he healed. Very good. So you know this story. All right. So
So some of you kids probably know this story too, just like Bria, but we're going to read it from my Bible here. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. Have you ever been in a building that was that packed before? I have just like very, very few times where the only room was standing room and you had to go outside of where it was. It's crazy. So while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. Like his bed, right? And they couldn't bring him to Jesus, though, because of the crowd. So they dug a hole. They climbed up to the roof, and all the roofs are really flat there. And they dug a hole in the roof above his head, above Jesus' head, and they lowered the man on the mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What's he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that I am the Son of Man. I, I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, and he grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. Isn't that awesome? So, Bri, I have a couple of questions for you. First off, could the paralyzed man have gotten into that room to be healed by Jesus if he was by himself? No, because he was paralyzed. So he couldn't have gotten there because he couldn't move. Right, so what did he need? He needed people to help him. He needed people to help him, just like we need people to help us in our faith, don't we? See, those people helping him to be healed also helped him with his faith in Jesus because there's no way he could walk away from that without having faith in Jesus, right? So, just like he needed people's help, we need people to help us in our faith. And we're going to talk about that this week. Um, make sure to check out the Kid City Facebook page and the YouTube channel for our videos Tuesday through Friday. Friday is a Tyke Town video that will go through this for all of our preschool and toddlers. All right. Have a great Sunday and we'll see you later. Hey, once again, I want to thank our next gen pastors, Troy and Kelly, for all the work that they're doing with our kids throughout the week. Uh, I hope that you do check into some of the things they're providing. Uh, it's really, really good. But I want to mention just one thing above and beyond what they've mentioned today, and that is this. Maybe your family has reached a little bit of a tipping point in this uh, quarantine experience of our life. Maybe school at home is pretty overwhelming, or maybe working from home is pretty overwhelming, or maybe just not working at all is just causing a lot of tension. I just want to encourage you to just to reach out to, to one of us if we can. Kids, that, that especially goes for you. If, if life at home has kind of gotten difficult, I want to encourage you to reach out to Pastor Troy or Pastor Kelly, and uh, let's, uh, let's have a great conversation about what's going on. We can do that on a phone call, or we can set up a Zoom call, whatever would be best for you. But I just want to encourage everybody, if, if it's getting difficult out there, uh, reach out. We'd love to have a conversation about how we can support you and, and uh, love on you and all those important things. Hey, well, I'm, you can say I'm out of my running gear uh, today, and, and that's good. We're ready to start our third message in this series called Suit Up, where we're talking about Paul's powerful analogy of the armor of God. So far in this series, we've looked at the, the belt of truth, which we discovered that the only truth in our world is found in God's Word. Last week, Pastor Steve led us in this moment where he put on the Kevlar body armor and talked about how God's righteousness covers us. And we considered that breastplate 
of righteousness. And so today we get to talk about what's on our feet. Now, I mentioned in week one that we dress to fit the occasion. Do you remember that? That we're supposed to dress to fit the occasion. But as we dress, we cannot forget the shoes. Now, I love sports, and I get to play some sports in my life, and I, and I love that. So I've got lots of different shoes for those various sports that I like to participate in. I've got running shoes. I've got basketball shoes. I've got softball cleats. I even have shoes for riding my bike, which, quite honestly, i got to admit, I haven't worn those in some time. But once I get all of my use out of those shoes, you know what happens? They become my mowing shoes. (laughs) Now, maybe you do something very, very similar, but I'm curious, what kind of shoes do you have? Uh, How many shoes do you have? Some of you probably have dancing shoes. Some of you might have steel-toed construction boots. Some of you probably have cowboy boots that you even love to wear. If you're on your feet all day long, you probably have to choose shoes that are very comfortable for you. If you just want to look good, you're probably not too worried about comfort. You're just interested in what those shoes look like, right? Because sometimes we choose shoes for comfort. Sometimes we choose our shoes for style. That goes uh, goes both ways for guys and girls, quite honestly. As a matter of fact, I read this week that the average American guy has, on average, 12 pairs of shoes available to him at any given time. Now, The average female actually has 27 pairs of shoes. Now, I got to be honest with you, in our house, I think we drive that average up just a little bit. So today, after service, I want to encourage you to do something. Go to your bedroom, go to, you know, wherever you keep your shoes, and I want you to count how many pairs of shoes you have. Now, you got to be honest, and then at lunch or dinner or whenever you gather together as a family, you got to share your number with everybody And then even talk about maybe what your favorite pair of shoes are, why you love them so much. I think that'll be a a great opportunity for us today as a family just to kind of talk about the shoes that we have laying around. Back to our, our scripture lesson, when Paul is writing this letter, he's writing it to a church in Ephesus. This is where a group of his friends were. He had a significant role in starting this church. And he knew that the members of this church would be very familiar with the Roman soldier's gear. It would be very easy for him to draw this analogy and then apply spiritual wisdom to every piece of that military outfit. He reminds us in this letter that our struggles are not uh, found in what we can see or touch or feel. True conflicts, he writes, are spiritual in nature. The rulers, the authorities of the unseen world. He writes about mighty powers even of the dark world. See, sometimes we need to be reminded that your struggle with regret or shame or your addiction, or your inability to love yourself or to love others really isn't a physical battle inside of you as much as a spiritual one. And Paul reminds us of that in this letter. And I got to thinking with all the things that are going on in our world that is so confusing, it's just good for me to be reminded that our struggle is not against doctors or scientists or immunologists. Our struggle is not even against the policies of our governor or any governor or our president even for that matter. Even these struggles that we're in today have a root of a spiritual nature. And the only way we're really going to find power or victory over them is to understand this armor of God and to be on our knees seeking God's wisdom in all of these things. That's the only way we can really stand firm according to what Paul wrote here. So let's go back to what Paul wrote. This is again Ephesians chapter 6. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on the the salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
Verse 15 is going to be our focus for today. Some translations use the word readiness or preparation to describe the atmosphere of putting on your shoes. But get this, your shoes that Paul is talking about are constructed 100% from good news. Good news. Aren't we all looking for just a little bit of good news these days? I don't know if you've seen this, but actor, producer John Krasinski has created this YouTube phenomenon called SGN, Some Good News. And he basically just spends a few moments highlighting various awesome stories that he finds from around the internet. His first episode of SGN has been viewed over 17 million times. I mean, the truth is, is that we are hungry for good news. Because good news inside of our soul, it it restores our hope in society. And quite honestly, good news just kind of comes over us and gives us this deep feeling of peace. Good news is connected to the expression of peace. Paul knew this 2,000 years ago when he wrote, Put on the peace that comes from the good news. You know, as the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection was spreading from, from village to village, there became this connection to that story with an ancient term. In the Hebrew, it was beser. It is this idea of a royal pronouncement. If the army was out in battle, someone would blow a horn. It would be this royal pronouncement that the army was successful and everyone back home could rest easy. In the Greek, the word is euangelion euangelion, which means good announcement. Quite literally, that that complex word means good announcement. Our English word for euangelion is gospel, which simply means good news. By the second century, the word euangelion and gospel had really become significantly identified with the story of Jesus, whose life brought us good news, whose death was was difficult news to, to grasp, but whose resurrection is great news. Now I imagine as Paul is putting this, this piece of the armor together, he's making a connection to what he had memorized as a child from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. The good news of peace and salvation. The news that the God of Israel reigns. Can you imagine how Paul must be feeling in this moment when he's writing about the armor, talking about the shoes uh, that bring peace of the good news, thinking about Isaiah? Because right before his very eyes, these words from Isaiah are becoming true. I mean, do you remember that there was one day where Paul's feet were were once set to persecute and silence the Jesus movement? His feet were committed to travel wherever they needed to go in order to silence those who were were proclaiming the good news about Jesus. But then, in a moment, Jesus reveals himself as truth and peace, and Paul's feet suddenly takes a completely different direction. And now Paul is willing to walk thousands of miles to proclaim the good news that the long-awaited Son of God has arrived. The one that the Jews had called their Messiah has come. And the good news about this story is that his mercy, his love, his hope is not limited to the Jews. No, it's available for everyone. Jews and Greeks, men and women, boys and girls. This good news brings peace into the heart of the worst sinner. It penetrates the heart of the greatest offender of God. This good news that Jesus has come knows no bounds. The peace that comes from this good news knows no limitations as it sends shock waves throughout the hearts of all people. But it can only do that as it's shared from the mouths of those who put the steps in, who go. Even Isaiah saw that. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. See, the belt is sturdy. It holds everything together. The breastplate breastplate is firm. But the shoes, they involve action. They must go. They must carry this message of good news to all of those who have not heard or who do not believe. Now, Jesus told his disciples when his time on earth was growing to an end and he was promising to send the Holy Spirit, he said these words, John recorded them, I am leaving you a gift, 
peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. The world tries to offer peace and security, but it always leaves us short. Some of us thought we had peace and security until about two months ago, and now many jobs are lost, and then health and security is threatened, and our futures are even just kind of scary and, and a mystery. See, the best that the world can offer is just an illusion of peace. But Jesus says, I don't offer illusions. I offer real, genuine, and true peace. Some of us have suffered incredible loss during this time. Loss of work, uh, loss of a sense of security, and so we're anxious. But even more than that, some of us have lost loved ones. We've lost a husband and a brother, a friend, a co-worker. We've lost a mother or a father. And when we suffer pain on this level, what do we need? We need peace, right? We, we desire to have peace in our life. And how does that peace travel to you when you're hurting like that? Well, quite often it happens, it travels rather through a hug or a gentle touch or maybe a shared tear from a good friend or a family member. See, the peace of Jesus travels from life to life, from person to person. The shoes that Paul is describing here could stay useless in our closets. We may have them, but they're never put on. Or we can use those shoes, put them on our feet, and go to be in relationship with others, to build community with one another. The gospel, the good news, the, the, the peace of Christ is found in these quiet and simple moments of human connection and relationship. And that is discovered most effectively when we share life together, when we travel this road of life together, one step at a time, with shoes of hope, with shoes of good news on our feet. Can we begin to see the picture that Paul is, is painting in front of our very eyes? Father Richard Rohr, who's a Franciscan priest, who leans quite honestly heavily on the mystic and contemplative side of our faith, he wrote a devotional thought this week about the, the foundation of community. He writes, The Trinity offers us this precise gift of community, a grounded connection with God, self, others, and the world. The way of Jesus, therefore, is an invitation to a way of living, loving, and relating on earth as it is in God. While we may not always recognize it, we are all together in a web of mutual interdependence. When we recognize it on a spiritual level, we call it love. Now, this message of community and, and being together and recognizing that our very design is to be in, in interdependence with one another is a powerful connection to this idea of spreading the message of peace. This message of good news and peace that Paul says we must put on and go and, and give is right out of the directive of Jesus when he says to go and to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And just before he ascended back to heaven, he reminds us that you will be my witnesses, that we will all be his witnesses, telling people about him everywhere to the very ends of the earth. And the way that he taught his disciples to accomplish this, this mission of going to the very ends of the earth was the very way that he lived it out right before their eyes. One loving embrace at a time. One outcast given hope at a time. One disqualified soul renewed by the mercy and love of God. One at a time. And this would have never happened if the disciples, if his early followers would have stayed huddled together. But they knew that they had to put on their shoes of this good news and go throughout the world to share it. When Father Richard was writing about this, he, when he says we recognize community, when we recognize mutual understanding, when we sense that interdependence on a spiritual level, that's when we call it love. 
that really gripped me this week. And I began to ask myself, do I live in proper community with others? Do I live my life with shoes prepared and ready to go and share his love? Or do I live my life with shoes that play it safe? Do I live my life in such a way that's seeking popularity with where I go or success or recognition? Are my shoes about my personal agenda, my political uh, positions? Are my shoes about my personal comfort and style? Or about my, are my shoes about preparing me and being ready to go into the, the uncomfortable places of our world in order to share about God's love and his mercy and hope? The message of Jesus, this message of the, the Son of God coming to earth and laying his life down as a sacrifice for my sin is one that needs to be shared. This story that he did this so that we could experience the peace of God, so that we could be made right with God before, before God again, to, to experience salvation, that is a powerful message. It is the good news, and it brings peace, and it must be shared. The question I ask myself and you today, are you willing to share this good news? Are you willing to go? Are your, fit, are your feet fitted with the shoes that bring peace into your home, that bring peace into your workplace, that bring peace into your neighborhood or to your community? The picture that Paul is painting for us is that this is a call for all of us to go, for all of us to put on these shoes and to go make a difference. This is a call for all who believe, not just the role of the, the pastor or the staff. This is a call that all of us put on the full armor of God, that all of us put on the shoes that are ready to go announce the good news of Jesus Christ and that he is changing our lives. I've thought about Peter quite a bit this week when thinking about the change that takes place as we go out into the world. You know, Peter was one that was always quick to go he ran out on the water. He was quick to, to, to do anything that Jesus asked him to do. He spent three years with Jesus, but on the moment when it mattered most, as Jesus is being tried and beaten, it was Peter who denied even knowing him on three separate occasions. I mean, it's unfathomable to think that Peter, the most outspoken disciple of them all, would be the one who would deny Jesus. And yet, he did. Now, after the resurrection, Jesus gets Peter alone and he restores him and then gives him the keys to the kingdom. Years later, Peter writes these words. Instead, you must worship Christ as the Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. It's almost as if Peter is reminding himself of the moment he blew it. And he's saying, don't do what I did. Don't get caught off guard and stay silent. Don't keep this good news to yourself. Instead, worship Christ as the Lord of your life and take this good news to the very ends of the earth. Never stop. Be ready. Even Paul shared the same idea with his young apprentice named Timothy. He says, but you, Timothy, should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry that God has given you. God has given every one of us, young and old, a ministry. He's given us an audience and he's putting before us the shoes to go and take this message to that audience. When I thought about what it takes to share the good news of Jesus, I thought about three important characteristics, three important steps in this process. The first is that we need to recognize that this is a personal step, that, that sharing the good news is built upon the idea of relationship and community, that that connection of mutual affection is most important. I could share the good news of Jesus Christ with a stranger, and it may have impact. But a deeper impact takes place when someone that you love, someone that you already have mutual affection for, hears the message from your lips 
or you hear the message from their lips and suddenly you have their love, their credibility built into that story. It is powerful. So the first thing we must remember about sharing the good news of Jesus is that it's built around this idea of being personal and relational. The second thing that come to, came to mind is that it's built around the idea of prayer. Prayer is simply this idea of communicating with God. That can happen in our mind. It can happen with the spoken word. But the reality is that if we're going to share the gospel of Jesus, we have to be people of prayer and listening for God's voice to tell us where to go and when to go and whom to share this with. To share the good news of Jesus, it's personal. It's built out of prayer. And then finally, the third thing I'd mention is that it brings peace. You know, the confidence to share the good news of Jesus, the confidence to, to articulate this, this change and transformation that's taking part in your life because of the salvation that Jesus has given you, that is something that brings deep peace, a centering peace in your life, even in the midst of incredible struggle or storms. I've been with many people who are going through some of the most challenging moments of their life, and it's in those moments, those, those moments of suffering, those moments of, of just being absolutely tossed back and forth when they can most articulate the peace of God. It's probably because Jesus said this, I've told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have over come the world. I mean, you can't buy this piece. You can't manufacture this piece. You can't make this piece up in your head. Sometimes it's difficult to describe this level of peace, but in all circumstances, you can share this peace with others. You can share it with a, a, a friend who is hurting. You can share it with a loved one who is searching for truth. You can share this kind of peace with a coworker who's suddenly asking all kinds of spiritual questions. Because there are many people asking questions in our day today, aren't they? I mean, people that you never thought would ever ask spiritual questions are asking them because we are experiencing some unsettling days. So I want to ask you, are you searching for peace? Are you wondering why you're even watching this video right now? I don't, maybe why you're sitting where you are or overhearing what you're overhearing, you're thinking, why am I even hearing these words? I believe it may be because you, down deep in your heart, know you need peace. Maybe you're just tired. Maybe you're tired of listening to all the lies in your head. The lies that say you don't matter, or that you're worthless, or that no one loves you, or that you're beyond hope. Friends, hear me on this. Those lies are not rooted in the physical nature. Those are the lies of the enemy on a spiritual nature who is waging war on your soul. And we must do battle with the armor of God. We must fight against the temptation to listen to those words because that is not the words of our God. I want to challenge you today. If you've been giving in to those lies, if you've been listening to those lies, place your life, your messed up, your confused, your selfish and sinful life in the hands of Christ. He will accept you, he loves you, and he desires to redeem you. You know, on, on, on one particular day, Jesus was confronted with a sinful woman she was brought to him because according to the law, she should have been executed. She should have been actually stoned to death, taking rocks and throwing them at her until she dies. And the crowd asks Jesus, what should we do with her? In this moment, Jesus bends down and he begins to write on the floor with the finger, with the tip of his finger. And for the life of me, I would love to know what Jesus wrote. He stands up after just a moment. He says, I tell you what. The one who stands here today who has no sin, you may throw the first stone. And then he bends back down and he continues his doodling on the floor. One by one, you can hear the stones drop to the ground and people leave. And he stands up in just a moment and he says, hey, where did everyone go? And the woman looks back at him and says, they've left. 
well, you mean they're not condemning you any longer, Jesus says? And she says, no, sir, they aren't. And his response is so powerful. He says, good, neither do I. This is such a powerful moment of forgiveness because in her guilt, she deserved to die. But Jesus pardons her, forgives her, and gives her a new life. But get this, Jesus didn't stop there. Sometimes we just want to think that Jesus doesn't judge, but Jesus goes on to look in her eyes. Now I believe with tears streaming down his face as tears are streaming down her face. And he says this, Now go and sin no more. See, Jesus recognizes that in her being spared, in her life being spared, there was a new sense of peace welling up inside of her. And he wants her to take this peace and go and live with that. She had been looking for peace and security in all different kinds of places. And now Jesus says, go and sin no more. Here's the truth. We cannot be redeemed. We cannot be forgiven and stay the same. We just can't. The work of God inside of us changes us. If you're desiring the peace that only God can give, if that's your heart's cry today, if you're searching for wholeness and love and hope, then you've come to the right place because it can be found only in the shoes that bring the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news that brings peace. And you know what? In the closet of Jesus, he has just your size. He's got shoes waiting for you. And so I say, come on. I want to invite you to put on these shoes of peace today. If, are you seeking truth? Are you seeking righteousness? It's found in Jesus. Do you desire to bring that truth into your world? Well, the ability to take that message into your world is found in him. Are you ready to put on new shoes today? Shoes that can bring you peace in the midst of all of the chaos in our world? I hope so. If you're willing to take that step today, I want to invite you to pray with me. I'll just say some words and you can repeat them right where you are. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to repeat these words out loud with me right where you are in this moment. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, today I see my sin. I see my pride. I see my selfishness and I don't want it anymore. Jesus, take my life and cleanse it with your love. Thank you for paying the price for my sin. You did that on the cross. So now forgive me. Heal me. Make me your child today, I pray. Jesus, today I found some new shoes and I need your help putting them on. I want to take your good news to my family, to my friends, and to anyone you send my way. Place inside of me the confidence, the love, and the peace to share your hope with our broken world. I pray in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Man, I'm telling you right now, friends, if you prayed that prayer, prayer with me, no matter how old, no matter how young you are, this is the greatest news of the day. And it's news worth sharing. It's news worth going out and sharing with those you know and love. But I want you to know this. As you go, you are not alone. When Jesus commissioned his friends to go out into all the world, he said this, be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Everywhere you go, God is with you. As you're lacing up your shoes that bring the gospel of peace and go out into the world, know this, God is with you and he's bringing that peace to fill your life as well. So today, let's celebrate that he is still with us. Let's worship him for the peace that he brings into our lives.
There's a city that calls me by name. There's a city that calls me by name. Yes, as I run this race, I am cheered by the saints. There's a city that calls me by name. There's a future that runs through my veins. There's a future that runs through my veins. And there's nothing on earth that can stand in the way. There's a future that runs through my veins. same spirit I cannot contain. Everywhere I go on this road, high and low, where I go, I go with you. So I won't be afraid, this my hope, come what may, where I go, I go. Isn't God good? I mean, He's so good. He is with you no matter where you go. And He's bringing peace along with you. He's filling you with peace and He's sending that peace into our world through you. This is God's gift for you during these incredibly troubling times. And it's a gift that no one and nothing can take from you. I pray that if you Find moments this week where you're struggling or you're giving in to fear or you're listening to those lies again inside of you. Put on those shoes. Go physically take, put on some shoes if you need to. Be reminded that God's good news, the good news of Jesus brings peace and hope and healing to your life today. If there's anything that I can do to be a help or a source of encouragement in your spiritual journey, I really hope that you would reach out to me. My email is on the screen right now, and I would love for you just to reach out, send me a note. We can connect and have a time to talk. We can do anything that we can during this season of social distancing to encourage your spiritual journey. But please reach out. Our staff is available. We would be honored to to partner with you in your spiritual journey this week. So reach out to us, I hope. And remember, you are loved. Now, don't go too soon. We've got some important things we want you to be aware of and share with you. And as you've started to pick up on, the announcements are some of the best part of our day. So thanks for being with us. I'm praying for you. I hope that again, we get to see you soon.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, are you ready for this Sunday's announcements? Well, for the hundreds in attendance and the thousands watching around the world, let's get ready to rumble! Oh yeah! Join us at 9 a.m. on the Kid City Facebook page every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't you ever forget about Student Ministries every Sunday at 5.30 on Zoom. Check out the Hub for more information about both of these ministries. Oh yeah! Woo! Well, I'm the Nature Boy! And I'm a stylin', profilin', Rolex wearin', limousine ridin', private jet flyin', wheelin', dealin', kiss stealin', 16 time world champion, baby. Woo! But how do you find your identity? Find it Sunday morning, 9 30 at the gathering. Sign up on the hub. Woo! You don't know me. But you know what I do. I put the bite on you. Since you don't know me, I'll give you a clue. I'll see you this Friday for family trivia night. Sign up on the hub. You bring your family, I'll bring mine. We'll see with our little eyes. <laughs> and the winner will receive a prize. <laughs> Has COVID-19 got you drinking like a rattlesnake? Well, Austin 316 says bring your bottles and cans to Flushing Community Church Saturday, May 16th, between 8 a.m. and noon. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you, check the hub for more information. And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold said so. <sighs> Let me tell you, brother, we already put on the belt of truth. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. And today, brother, we learned about the shoes of readiness. Now, I know all you good hulkamaniacs out there, you're taking your vitamins, you're saying your prayers. And one thing you need to do is you need to make sure that every Sunday morning, you're here with us at 9.30 and 11 a.m. as we continue to talk about suiting up with the armor of God. Soon, brother, we're going to talk about the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. And brother, without those, I don't know what you're going to do when Hulkamaniacs and Flushing Community Church are running wild on you. Hey.